Well, good morning, church. Good morning. I'm, I'm so blessed to be here this morning. And having known John for a while, I, I'm inspired by um, what Lifeline has been able to achieve through his leadership. We look up to, to John, and he pulls us up, and he calls me um, by name, and he expects me to call him by name. Uh, in my culture, um, when we have an elder, we don't call them by name. Um, but what he's done, he's lifted us up um, to be um, with him. And it's a great honor to be associated with him and Dawn, his wife, and Nathan, and uh, Avril, and, and the rest of them. We've been in the borough for about 12 years. And the light that Lifeline shines in the borough is getting brighter and brighter um, by the day. Could you please do me a favor? Could you celebrate John and the leadership? I'm, I'm also here this morning. I have just one wife. Uh, and, and, and she's here, my wife Shay. We've been married now for 25 years. And uh, um, we're blessed with two wonderful children. Um, bless you. And I'm also here with one of our um, protocol officers. He goes with me um, to be a part of what we do. Lord, we thank you because all things are made ready. And uh, you are prepared today, Lord, to, be, uh, to bless somebody here um, in the way that they um, cannot phantom. We ask, Lord, that as, we, as I speak your word, hide me, Lord, in you, uh, that all they will hear is you and what you have for their hearts. Bless this meeting, O oh God, that we also may become a blessing in our generation, in Jesus' name. And I want to say to everybody here, um, no matter how dark life gets, God always shows up at the right time. We are um, called to experience some difficulties in life that will make us stronger. And so during those difficult times, what we have to do is we have to hold on to God. And so at times what God would want to do is just to assure people that he's on their case. I'd already thought what I was going to minister on until early this morning, and I had a prompting on what, on what I would speak about. I'm very certain absolutely certain that there is someone here that God wants to, to touch their lives, but he would want you to reach out to him so that he can reach out back to you. If we go into the scriptures, and I'll start off, we're going to read two portions of scriptures. The first one is from Matthew chapter 8, from Matthew chapter 8, and we'll take it from verse 5. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered uh, and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I am also a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you, that many will come from the east and the west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. And please go with me to Hebrews chapter 11. And we'll read from, we'll read a number of verses. I'm, 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 I'm a person who loves to read the scriptures. So I will read a lot of scriptures and we'll talk through um, the scriptures that, that, I, that I do read. Hebrews chapter 11 and then would read from verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Something, something that is very striking to me is without faith, it is not possible for anybody to please God. All our efforts, all our services... Um, our marriages, our homes, our vocation. If it does not include the faith that is demonstrated, we cannot please God. Not at all. 
We may have a wonderful praise worship. We may have a wonderful time in prayer. However, if it lacks the faith, then we cannot please God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is not a figment of imagination. It is, it is real. It has substance. And the Bible says as we read on, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. So when God is talking about to us and saying, the elders obtained a good report, when he's talking about the elders and, and he's giving testimony about individuals, he's doing so because of the demonstration of their faith. So when God said in Job chapter 1, Satan, where are you coming from? He says, to and fro, because that's his job, going to and fro all the earth. And God said, to Satan, have you seen Job, my servant? The elders obtained a good report. So in the heart of God, the report he has about the elders who had been before us was on the basis of their faith. So their faith endeared them to God to the point that when God is talking about them, he's talking about them based on the demonstration of their faith. And when the Bible says in Hebrew 11.6, without faith it is impossible. It means you can't please God. Jesus said in the book of John, 1 John 5, he says, I know he hears me. Jesus was talking about, no, not 1 John, it's uh, John who said that um, um, about answered prayers and faith. But Jesus said, I know he hears me because I do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So faith pleases God. Without faith, we cannot please God. All he does is he watches us and looks at us. But if we want to get into the heart of God and we want God to move on our behalf, there has to be a demonstration of faith. The centurion servant was sick and he sent to Jesus concerning his servant. And Jesus said, you know what? I will, I will actually come with you. I will go and heal the guy. And, and the centurion said, no, no. He said, you know what? I don't need you to come. Because everybody wants Jesus to come. Everybody wants Jesus to follow them. The man said, I don't need you to come. Because I'm also a person under authority. I understand what it means to have authority. And all I will do is I will say to my servant, go. And he goes. I will give him response. And he does it. And Jesus looked about all those who were around him. And he was shocked. And he said, he said, everybody, listen, 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 listen to what this man has said. Listen to what he has said because he looked around and said, listen. He says, not even in Israel have I found such faith. God is looking for people of faith. God is looking for people who, who can depend on him because what faith is, faith means I trust God. Faith means I trust God. Faith means that I don't have an alternative. Faith means if I believe him, I believe him without an alternative. That's what faith is. Faith is coming to church and asking the leaders to pray for you, but you have not booked an appointment to see the doctor the next day. That's what faith is. If you go to Africa, there's a demonstration of faith when people need to reach God because they don't have an alternative. So they reach God with faith. That's why we see so much miracles, so much things happening outside of the first world country because all people depend on is faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The elders obtained a good report. And when we read what we've read in, in Matthew chapter 8, is it Matthew chapter 8 that, that we read? Jesus said, there's something about the children of the kingdom. The children of the kingdom are supposed to manifest, are supposed to display faith. People will come from the east, from the west, they will come and sit with Abraham. But the sons of the kingdom, we are the sons of the kingdom, are supposed to manifest faith. The sons of the kingdom are supposed to manifest faith. The Bible says by faith we understand. Faith gives you understanding. Nobody was there during creation. The Bible says by faith we understand that the world was created through the things. Faith gives us understanding. Were you there during the time of creation? Did you see how he made the earth? Well, how did you accept it? You accepted it by faith. So when the scientists are saying, well, no, you know what you came? You came from, uh, from monkeys. You reject it because you have an understanding. You didn't come from monkeys. And that you are not going to metamorph into something else. It's by faith we understand it. 
So faith gives us that understanding. It doesn't matter what the Bing Bang theory is. It doesn't matter what they are saying. How convincing it may be. But faith gives you understanding and says, no, that's not true. That's what faith is. Faith gives us, by faith, we understand. So when you have faith, you will understand. So when you say things, people say to you, you must be silly. How can you think like that? It's because you are standing on faith. Without faith, it is impossible. We must believe God. And I want to say to you today, here, this morning, I don't know what you are believing God for. I don't know what you expect him to do. But if you would reach out to him by faith, I can tell you that he will give you everything. Faith. It is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. It's saying, Lord, I trust you. That's what it is. I trust you. Have you seen children when they stand on the table and their dad says, come on, jump and jump. They have such faith. They first of all ask, will you catch me? And dad says, I will catch you. They don't even think about it. They just jump because they know that father will do so. And that's what faith is in God is. That if he takes you to the top of the cliff and asks you to jump, you're not going to question, oh God, are you really going to get wrong? Are you, look at how deep the crab is. Are you really? We are not, we're not questioning him, but we are believing him. I remember when the Lord said to me a few years ago, and he said, get up and go to Zimbabwe. And I thought, Zimbabwe? I've never been to Zimbabwe. I don't know anybody in Zimbabwe. Who, what do I go and do in Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe? No, I'm, I, I, and, 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 and I didn't. Three months later, I, I, he said, get up and go to Zimbabwe. I said, but Lord, I don't know anybody in Zimbabwe. I've never been to Zimbabwe. I don't have a Zimbabwe friend. So, and then one day he just said, I said, get up and go to Zimbabwe. I picked my bag, booked a, a five days uh, stay in a hotel, and I went, and every day I walked around Zimbabwe. The work we do in Zimbabwe today was because I trusted God. So whatever you are doing, I don't know what you are believing God for here today. It could be for a job. It could be made you have a medical condition. I want to assure you today is a different day for you. I want to assure you that the Lord will visit you today in the name of Jesus. You know, the Bible says in Hebrew 11.4, By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice. So faith gives you excellence in your service to God. God had never requested an offering anything from Cain or Abel. But faith was just in Abel. That he just thought to himself that, you know what? I mean, God has blessed me. I'm a man of the field. I have a, a, a husbandry. I mean, to farming. I mean, to uh, livestock. The Lord never said anything to him. But the Bible says, and Abel brought of the first. First, his brother gave an offering, even though they started business the same day. The Lord never asked anything. All his faith just realized in him. That if God will multiply, if God will establish, then God deserves the first, not an offering. There was no law. There was no requirement. But faith in him brought him to the point. He didn't know it was going to be recorded by God. And God said in Hebrew, telling us, Abel offered a more excellent offering. So which means that every offering is accepted. However, in comparison with others, his faith brought him to the point that he did the unusual. And there are times when God shows up on an, on an individual situation for people because they have acted on faith. Cain, on the other hand, just thought, you know what? God deserves an offering. Abel thought, no, God deserves the first. Cain said, Cain, well, God deserves an offering. All he really deserves is I just give an offering. But Abel thought, no, God deserves the first so our service to God is on the basis of our faith. Look at those who come in here early and they set up and they make it comfortable for us. And we just walk in and we just walk in and we don't greet people and all that. The service, faith makes our service excellent before him. By faith, he offered to God. So what do you offer to God? Your faith has to be real. By faith, verse 5, Enoch was taken away what that does, faith takes you into a deeper relationship with God. Faith takes you because you're waking in the morning and you're studying. You just realize that you can't be away from him. Look at the question we asked this morning. Tell somebody something you like. I know everybody, well, I told you, I said, I like this. And, all, and he came and say, do you like the presence of God? By faith, Enoch. So Enoch's relationship with God was such that God just thought, no, I can't leave this guy upon the face of the earth. I can't. I can't leave him. We have 
this relationship such that I, I, I can't bear to be separated in time from him. And so you know what? Let, let me just bring him up to me so that we can continue this relationship that we have. And by faith, all he did was he continued in his relationship with God. I don't know whether it was prayer. I don't know what it was. But it was such that God decided I know his family would have said, Lord, why did you take him? It's too early to take him. God said, you, you guys don't understand. You guys don't understand. You may be weeping. Oh, yeah, Lord, he's too early for him to go. But thought, you know what? Don't, you don't understand that the kind of relationship he has with me, which he has done by faith. That's why you see some people go to uh, house groups. They go continuously. You go continuously. They're doing things in service because your faith takes you deeper with him. And you think, oh, why do I have to go every time? Oh, their faith brings them to the point that their relationship with God is so tangible and so real that God is always manifesting himself to, to them. Always manifesting himself to them. Always manifesting himself to them. Always, manif always, always. Because their faith has taken them deep in God. Everything is faith. And people ha don't have that much faith. Uh, the thing is, we don't have to have so big a faith. Much as you have faith, as small as they must, that's all the Lord needs. Faith, as small as a mustard seed. Paul was preaching one day, and the Bible says in Acts of Apostles, and as he preached, there was a man who, the Bible says, had faith enough to be healed. All he had, that's all he had. He had faith enough to to be healed. And all Paul said to him, get out of Because the man had faith enough to be healed. And I'm saying to us today, faith will take you deeper in your relationship with God. Oh, faith will take you deeper. It will take you so deep that times you would want to stop worshiping and fellowshiping God, you won't be able to stop. Because you just realize there's something tangible about your relationship with God. It's not superficial. But it's deep because you are sensing God every time. Faith just says, you know what, I'm going to start. Because I know, I know that once I, once I start with him, he's also going to start with me. Faith just takes you deeper and faith takes you deeper and faith takes you deeper. And you pray more and you fellowship more because you know it brings you before him. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not see death. And was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So God was saying, let me tell you something about, let me tell you something about Enoch. Yeah, let, let me tell you something about Enoch. Let, 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 let me tell you. He had, he had this testimony with God that he pleased God. Can you imagine God vouching about you? Okay, somebody goes to report you to God and God says, um, uh, uh, it's like when um, um, Abimelech uh, took, the, uh, took um, Abraham's, Abraham's uh, uh, is it Abraham? Abraham? Yeah, his wife. And uh, the, Lord, the Lord came down to him and said to him, return, return the man's wife back to him. Return. Can you imagine God showing up on your behalf? Say, take, return, return the man's wife back to him. And what God did was, all of them in the city, the wife in the, uh, the women in the city in the house, God held, held them up from becoming pregnant. The Lord said, you are a dead man. They're not showing up for him. The Lord, whether what Abraham did was right or not, but God showed up for him. They had this testimony with God. Question is, what testimony do we have with God? Because God knows every one of us. He knows those of us who are here on the Sunday because we have nowhere else to go than Sunday. He knows those of us who, uh, are, who are very serious with him. He knows every single one of us. He knows those who are serving because they know they want to touch heaven. He knows, he knows everything. And God had this, they had this testimony with God. It wasn't Satan who brought up the issue of Job. It was God who brought it up. Where are you coming from, Satan? I'm coming from toe and fro. All the earth. All right. so God said, come, come, come. Have you seen? Have you seen that there is none like, like Job my, who fears me and shuns iniquity? Have you seen? It was God's testimony. It was God's testimony. And everything is done by faith. And God wants us to reach out to him today in faith. That God, if you've said it, that settles it. 
That God, if you've said it, that settles it. If you've said it, that absolutely settles it. I love the story. Quickly go with me to Hebrew 11, um, verse, uh, verse, seven, seven, verse 11. Verse 11, pardon. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sands which, are, which is by the seashore. Now, if you go to Romans chapter, I want to show you something from there. Romans chapter 4 and from verse 19. Can you please put it up for, for me? Romans chapter 4 and verse 19 to 21. Thank you, Nana. Read it. That's just so intriguing. I'm linking it straight to what I've just read. The Bible says, without, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver at the promise. Now listen to, to this. Here was God who came down, and they were on their journey, and Abraham saw them afar in the book of Genesis, and decided, you know what, I can't allow you to go by without me entertaining you. So then Abraham and Sarah entertained God with the angels, the imprecated person of Christ, and, and came and they had a good time after they had eaten. Then the Lord said, you know what, uh, where's, your, where's your wife? Hey, she's, in ki she's in the kitchen. And Abraham had not discussed the situation of his family with, um, uh, with the angels. And the Lord now said to um, um, said to Abraham and, and, and uh, Sarah your wife Sarah your wife according to the season of life she will have and the Bible says Sarah laughed however 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 something happened there as she laughed and the angels went she called Abraham and said Abraham because even though Abraham both of them were 100 Abraham was 100 and he knew that Sarah's womb was as dead and he also was old Sarah must have said to Abraham that evening, honey, come, come, let's go inside. Eh? <laughs> was I said to her? Yes, at the hundred, at the hundred, I don't know how functioning Abraham would have been sexually, but let's go in. You heard what the angel said. You heard, because that's what faith is. You heard what the angel said. So since he was about a hundred, and Sarah's womb also dead, Yet he did not waver through unbelief. Said, Abraham, come on, let's go in. Abraham too said, you know what? It has been spoken, so let's go in. That night, something happened. At that age, 100 wives are at that age. I don't know when was the last time they had their sexual relationship, but something happened that night. That's faith. So even though they considered it dead, they did not waver at the promise. You can't, you can't get to the point where the devil says it's not going to happen. It will happen. Healing is the children's bread. Oh, please, uh, my daughter is a demon possessed at home. Please come and heal. And Jesus completely ignored her. Then Jesus made a statement. It's not good for us to give the bread uh, uh, that belongs to the children uh, to the dogs. Ah, and can you imagine calling me a dog? Come on. I mean, all I came to you is for healing, and you have used an illustration, dog. I mean, oh, no, no, no. She said, you know what, Lord? Even the remnants, even the remnants, that even those who are not qualified for it, even scrabble for the remnants. And Jesus said, oh, my God. Well, he's calling himself God. Well, ah, ah, faith. We have to have faith. For without faith, we cannot Please, God, faith is what gives you the understanding. Faith is what makes you offer. Faith is what takes you into a deeper place with God. Tap somebody from and say, you must have faith. Come on, you must have faith. Can you read something with me? Hebrews 11.6. Can we read it out together, everybody? Hebrew 11.6. Hebrew 11.6. Hebrew 11.6. Hebrew 11.6. For without faith. Hebrew 11, 6. Thank you very much. Let's all read it together. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Just a minute. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's not, you can't please him. Without the application of faith, you can't. 
without the application of faith in your life, you can't please God. Scripture says it. Without faith, you can't. So you can't live here this morning without developing a degree of faith. You can't live here this morning without believing that if the Lord has said it, he's big enough to accomplish what he said. The children of Israel cried, oh, we are tired of this meat that we have been eating. Oh, we are tired of this, uh, this bread, this manna. We have baked it. We have toasted it. We have ovenated it. We have, we have done all. We are tired. We want, we want something else. Give us meat. And then Moses goes to God and says, Lord, I'm tired of these people that you have, uh, uh, they have asked me to lead. And they've been asking for meat. And the Lord said, yeah, 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 yeah. I will give them meat. Not one day. <laughs> and Moses says, Lord, maybe you, maybe you don't understand the number of people that we're talking about. There are 600,000. So he now says to God, just in case you don't know the number, because you said you were going to give them meat. He said, all the, all the cattle, are they enough? Are all the fish? So Moses said to God, there are 600,000 men, excluding women and children, just in case you don't understand. Without faith, it is impossible possible to please God. There's somebody here, you have a challenge in conception. The Holy Spirit says to tell you that you will conceive before the half of this year we reach there. And it's going to be by his own miracle. But I need you to reach out to him that if he has said it, and have an amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that is a reward of those who diligently. By faith, Noah being divinely warned of those things not yet seen. Faith moves you. It gives legs to your faith. It gives legs to what you believe. It had never rained. Noah had never seen rain because the Lord came down and would water and would, and would cause a mist to come upon the garden. And that's how the Lord took care of the garden. And the Lord now said to him, I'm going to rain something upon the earth. It's going to rain. I'm going to destroy this whole of humanity because the thought, the very thoughts of their heart is evil. The man had never seen rain. So when the Lord said to him, I'm giving you the dimensions of uh, this, this, this boat I want you to build. He had never seen a boat as big as that before. Never. So conceiving that. And the Bible says he moved. How do you talk to somebody about what you have never seen? How do you prepare somebody for an activity that has never, ever been recorded? How do you warn people of an experience that you yourself have not experienced but God told you? How do you build something that you have never seen built? The Chinese are good at copying. So they copy what they've seen. But how do you build something that you have never seen? And all he's giving you is the... And then for a hundred years, he was warning people, day one, year one, year two, year three, and he kept hammering, and he kept hammering, and he kept hammering, that if the Lord had said it, then God is capable of making it happen. I'm saying to you, God is capable of fulfilling everything he has said to you, and he will perform it in the name of Jesus. But what you have to have is just have faith. You know what? Just, just have faith. Nobody may believe what you are saying. Nobody has to understand. No, but nobody needs to understand. He doesn't need anybody to understand. If he's, if he's spoken to you about something, he will. God is not man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should relent. Has he spoken it? He will make it good. He doesn't need you to help him out. He's big enough. All he needs you to have is faith. Now, if you've said it, Lord, I'm just going to hang on it. Yeah? Lord, if you said it, I'm just going to hang on it. Did you, did you realize the Bible says about the elders? about those who had not received it, but they had embraced it, okay? They had not seen it, but they had embraced it. So even those, these all died in faith, having not received it, but what they did was they embraced it. They embraced it. I'm going to just stand. If the Lord says it, it may be raining, you know what, I'm just going to remain standing. They embraced it. They totally embraced it, embraced it. Every word that you read that appeals to you, embrace it. Even though when it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. So you may be um, pregnant, but you keep having miscarriages. Just embrace the word. That one day, I was counseling a lady years ago. 
I went to visit a friend of mine who we went to college together. And here was this young lady who was there. Could you please let me know when my time is up? By faith. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I sat and, and here was this young lady and she told me her story and said she'd been married for 10 years and because she didn't have a child, the husband she had had kicked her out of the house. And so she had come to the UK and she was here. And I said to her that day, I said, God will give you your own husband. That's all I said. A few years down the line, she was standing at a bus stop in Peckham High Street. And here was this chap who drove his car past her and looked in the mirror and thought, whoa. Reversed, went to her and said to her, you are my wife. I married, I married them. And I'm saying to you, embrace the word. Every time John or any of the elders stand up here to make it, em embrace it. Because that's what faith is. Faith is saying that God cannot lie. If God has spoken it, no, God, God cannot lie. If you need healing in your body, you just, God cannot lie. Healing is the children's bread, it's, it's what belongs to us. That you need a financial breakthrough, that no, if God has promised it, if God has said it will happen, then he's big enough to make it happen. How he will make it happen is no concern of yours. Yours is just to believe. Yours is just to hold on to, hold on to him. And the more we hold on to him tenaciously, the more we begin to experience him in an unusual way. The Lord came to Abraham one day, was at home. And the Lord said to him, I want you to leave your father and your mother and your children and go to a place that I will show you. So Abraham goes to his family and says, um, the Lord who you all are not serving because he comes from a polygamous, he comes from um, a family of idol worshippers and says, I'm going to a place that the Lord will show me. I want you to picture this. He now says to his family, a God who you do not serve showed up to, and, and has, um, has told me to go to a place he will show me. I want you to picture his family members, Abraham, or Abraham then, where are you going? So tell us exactly where you are going. Tell us again, who spoke to you? And, and okay, you are going somewhere. Okay, so where? Where, where are you going? Where? At least give us a description if we are going to come and look for you. Tell us where. Not knowing where he was going. All the Lord said, go to a place and I will show you. I will show you. Or the Lord should show him up to Abraham. And said to him, I, I want your son. The one you believed me for. The one you waited for years for. I want him. Yeah, I want you to go and sacrifice him to me. Abraham did not argue with God. Concluding, the Bible says Abraham concluded, even before he started the journey, concluded. He had already concluded before starting the journey that he would raise him back. He had concluded. A lady was looking for a job one day. She came to her pastor. The pastor prayed and said, as you go out on Monday, God will open the door for you. It shall happen to you. She didn't have an interview. Picked up, dressed very nice, walked to the city walked into a building, uh, this is years ago, and said, I'm, I'm here to see uh, the director. He has asked to see me. So, oh, the secretary thought there had been an appointment, so sat down. After about 30 minutes, he ushered her in. Okay, please come, come in. He sat before her. Um, she sat before him, and he said, uh, yes, can I help you? And she said, I've come to start the job. Oh, and the, past, and, and the, and the managing director said, oh, are you the one? Because the, the week before, the managing director had spoken to someone to please send him somebody who's capable of doing a particular task. So as she sat there and said, I've come to start, he thought that she was the one that had been sent. And all she did was she acted by faith, on faith. Faith does the unusual things for you. Is it not faith that made you go when you wanted to, you wanted to start dating this lady or this guy? It was faith that made you go to her and say, you know, I like you, believing that she will not look at you and say, come on, come on, sorry. But no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was faith. It was faith. It was faith that brought you to the point that you brought the ring and you knelt down. It was faith. 
It was faith. All she could do, as you knelt down, she just, <laughs> she, she, she could do anything. But by your faith, you believe, you believed it. Have that same faith in God. That same, that faith, that if God said it, that if God, the Bible says Abraham concluded. Faith brings a conclusion to all matters. When the doctor gives you a report, faith brings you to a place where you are convinced are convinced in yourself. Even if you go for treatment, go to the, um, you go for um, chemo, you conclude in itself that if God says healing will take place, that chemo will work for you. It may not work for any other person, but your case, that whatever it is, it may not work for others, you have nothing to do with others, but you have concluded that God will use every means available to bring about what he has spoken concerning you. That's what faith is. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if we want to please God today, we want to please God always, just believe him. If he says jump, jump. Just ask him how high. Just, just jump. Just jump. Everybody will be looking and thinking, hey, you are jumping? You are jumping? Because sometimes God asks you to do things that are so embarrassing. But just do it. Build, build, build me, build, build a... a, a uh, an ark that will, uh, that will house all the animals. Lord, how will the animals get, get in? That's none of your business. All he says to you is, you just build. After you have finished building, God himself brought the animals into the ark. All the Lord says to you is, love your wife. He will talk to her and make her submit to you. All he says to you, wife, be submissive to your own. When you look at him, he's not the kind of person that you really should be submissive to. But all he has said, that, that faith is that, Lord, if we will do, if he, he who has started a good work in us is sure to bring it to a place of completion. So faith is, Lord, I'm, <laughs> this woman to love this one, <laughs> uh, Lord, it'll take, it'll, Lord, you have to help me. <laughs> but once you begin to do it, faith has a way of activating itself. And I'm saying to you today, Activate the faith that you have. 